Good morning. All right, so some of you have already started playing the dulcimers and more of you will be introduced soon. And this, we wanted to show you what the dulcimer club in your community looks and sounds like. And we have a lot of different instruments besides the dulcimer, so everyone, let it, we'll just let you see, they're all, they all have different shapes, slightly different sounds. I guess they're all made by different makers, and that's the beauty, part of the beauty of the dulcimer is the, the craft that goes into making them. So we'll introduce a few different instruments as we go along. The, one of the most important instruments that we use in this um, organization to keep us together when we play is that bass sound that you heard. And Ed here has made his dulcimer. So if you like to work in wood, he made a bass dulcimer. And he's playing an instrument that is also uh, uh, is the sound of a string bass but it's an, like an African uh, kalimba called a marimbula. And that's the sound that helps keep us all together when we play. So we've got a lot of instruments, though, other than the mountain dulcimer. Um, it, the next instrument that we're going to start the tune uh, Angelina the Baker with is the hammer dulcimer. And I'm going to have one of you hold that up and show them. So it has a lot more strings on it. Yeah. And she plays it with mallets, mallets or hammers. hammers? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll let uh, Hammer Dulcimer start this one out so you can get a good idea of what they sound like and then we'll join them. So I'm gonna count them off and they're gonna, we've got three of those in the group today, so they're gonna start this next song for us. Angelina Baker. Thank you. And this is the first time our club has done a performance. You are, you are special because we got out in the cold weather and <laughs> for the first time in over a year, have we, this is our first time to play together again. So this is, feels pretty special for us too. And our instruments think it's really special too. Oh yeah, I'm so happy. <laughs> so here's a song, the next song, these are all American tunes. And this next song is called Simple Gifts. And we'll start with an, another instrument that we like to have in our ensemble. It's called a bowed psaltery. You want to let them see what that looks like in the back there, back center. And as the name implies, it's played with a bow. Sounds a bit like a violin, doesn't it? Yeah. And then in the front row center, you'll see an instrument that has a lot more strings than a dulcimer. It's called an auto harp. I believe you've got an auto harp in your classroom, don't you, Miss Hammer? And it has buttons on it for her to change the chords. Just give them a strum there, Debbie. So we're going to start with the psalteries and the auto harp and gradually add everyone else to this uh, tune called Simple Gifts.
We do, we do have a banjo player in the club. She works during the day though, so she couldn't be with us, but we have a couple of dulcimers that sound a lot like a banjo. That's the way they were made. So De um, Betty, would you give a little strum on your banjo there? And Marsha has one in the back there that looks, uh, has the same kind of banjo head. So we're going to have those guys uh, kick off this next tune for us called Cindy. So we're going to start the next tune with our, what uh, we call the Banjamers. So say we use, we do usually sing a lot with the with uh, when we're playing the dulcimers. Just that it's as you know a little tricky to sing with the mask on. So we're not asking our members to do that today. Um, so let's see um, Black Mountain Rag, a fiddle tune that we're going to uh, finish up with. And what have I? We've got guitars. I haven't introduced the guitars yet. Miss Hammer is joining in with us today. Barbara and. and uh, we've got some percussion instruments, the drum, the Irish drum, the washboard, spoons, and I'll also play a little bit on the Irish whistle for this next tune. So, oh, and there's the Limberjack sitting there waiting to dance. <laughs> and Betty's got her her drums, her portable drums go here. Go into the kitchen and pull something out and let her rip, okay? <laughs> there you go. All right, Black Mountain Rat. One. So it's very unique to have, a, or it's very special, I think, to have a dulcimer club in your community. Not all communities have one. So this is um, not, an, it isn't an orchestra or a band or a barbershop quartet. We have, Hardin County is very fortunate in that we have a lot of different community ways to make music as an adult. And this is one of those, if you choose to make traditional, if you like folk music, and getting together and playing with others, and we don't require an audition. 
before you come and join us. Everyone is welcome to come and make music with us. So it's a very, um, it's a very special uh, group that we like to um, share the history of Kentucky and American music with you through our organization. Are there any questions? Where is the dulcimer made? Well, Ed is a perfect person to answer that question. I'm going to let you answer that question. Well, you take a bunch of thin pieces of wood and you glue them together to make this box, this rounded box. But first, you got to bend the wood, and then you make a nice straight neck, and you have to put these silver things on, which are called frets. And they have to be spaced just exactly right so they make the right musical note when you put your finger down. And then you put the strings on and you got a dulcimer. Dulcimers are kind of a neat instrument because you can make them out of almost anything. You can even make them out of a cardboard box. Yeah, just this past weekend I was in the birthplace of the dulcimer in Kentucky, Hindman, Kentucky, which is eastern Kentucky. And they still make the dulcimers there the same way that they were made 100 years ago. Um, Ed Thomas, who made a lot of dulcimers and uh, shared them in eastern Kentucky. And so the tradition is still being carried on today. You can go to the uh, place where they make the instruments and you can take a tour of their uh, school and their business and you can see them, as Ed talked about, you can see them bending the wood and putting the frets on. And, um, and interestingly, uh, uh, one of the stories he talked about was that um, they, you, they really trusted their musical ear to find out where to put those frets because initially they didn't, have, they didn't have the internet and patterns to go by. So they would make the fretboard and sing and mark where those frets were supposed to go and then uh, put, put it all together. So it's a, it's a, a great history of, in, of the instrument of the dulcimer here in Kentucky that's being carried on today. Yes. So if the frets were, I think that's what those were, on there was new, would, they, would it sound different? If they were new? Moved. If they were moved, it definitely would sound it very would sound different. really bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's, a, that's one of the very, that's one of the precision parts of making it is knowing exactly where to put those frets. Yeah, that's a very important part. That's a good question. For a dulcimer that sounds like a um, um, there are this this one actually has more of a guitar sound because it has that wider bottom like the guitar. So that's this is probably one that would be closest to that sound. All right. Well, thanks so much for coming out today and enjoying the Heartland Dulcimer Club.